I'm terrified being a teacher today. Like, not in this. When I first started teaching, it was because I was afraid of my safety, like physically, uh, a little bit emotionally and mentally. But uh, it's such a different thing now because all the worries and concerns that I have are not that I'm not doing my job, but I'm worried about public perception, really, is what it comes down to. Like, uh, I try to be, and I am very forward, forward with my students, you know, I, I tell them the truth. I tell them the truth that I have experienced. Okay, and there's lines of what you can say and what you can't say to students. But there's some things, especially with what's going on with society today, uh, that they need to hear. They need to hear some of these hard truths or these. Uh, this is the reality of the world. We can't can't protect them you know they're with social media and the internet alone they're seeing way more than what we've ever been seen so I could see at their age like they are going and seeing things that we never imagined and even when we could imagine it it was just on TV and we couldn't watch those shows because they were rated R you know um but there was a filter you know uh, parents generally speaking, good parents did, filtered what their children could see and what they couldn't see. But now they're, with internet and social media and everything like that, uh, they're seeing these things and parents, teachers, whomever, can't filter it. And like, maybe that's a good thing, maybe that's a bad thing. But uh, ultimately, the job then becomes, well, what did you think of it? Or what, like, how did this impact you? What does, does this agree with you? Like, do you agree with it? Like there, there's this guidance that must be uh, facilitated because that's what education is. Like the, the whole perception of what kids can, uh, cognitively handle uh, maturity and everything they're like they they don't get what they're seeing or there's kids that see that understand way too much of what they're seeing and they need help processing that like they that's a lot for a little kid or somebody like people who don't have uh, first-hand experience with these things or they, they don't have the exercise or somebody to guide it through it that's what really messes up kids and with everything that's going on wars uh, uh, viruses things like that that are going around and there's all this information being thrown at everyone really all this information is popping up everywhere and we don't know what to believe. We don't know if this person's saying the truth or if this is an accurate representation because we're getting this all through social media. It's filtered, it's it's guided, it's what the person understands this perception should be. And therefore we need to gather as much information and then make judgments. And they shouldn't be these inquit snap decision uh, automatic reflex because it's impacting everyone now because as soon as somebody says something about something then there's going to be a bunch that are going to be in agreeance or disagreeance and so you've got this swarm theory if you will this this smart swarm uh, of people undulating against each other of what is truth? What is what is my experience? This is how I feel, this is what I feel, but we don't really know because all the facts are convoluted. They're, they're lost, lost in translation. So with all this 
exposure, students need a lot of guidance. And that's the scary thing, is how do, how do we negotiate what is appropriate for them to address? And sometimes the things I say to students are things that they need to hear. As an educator, as somebody who's lived this far, somebody who thinks about thinking a lot, is this good? And so there's things that I need to address because students ask. And there's behaviors that form off of these perceptions. And I admire everything that parents do for their children, especially, particularly the ones that are good parents. But like, let's be honest, there's a lot of children raising children out there and their the role model is left to being those who educate really the the teacher must become the ideal for the students so there's this level of everything i do is in the aim to help students in their lives, the be I want the best for them, and there's a lot of fear that what the teacher is doing is inappropriate or is doing something that is uh, crossing a line, either by the, uh, to the parents or whomever. But you gave us your kids, you know. You're, we're here to take care of your kids. And if we're doing a good job, your kids will tell you the truth, you know? Like, they they will focus on what they believe, but they'll also take in account why they believe it. That's good teaching, right? And so the same would be expected of students perception of teachers. Students know when they're doing a good job. Now, the question is vindiction. You know, like, you gave me a bad grade, I'm gonna turn your world upside down, teacher. You know, or the parents are, how dare you give my, my poor child a bad grade? My child's better than that. Truth be told, a lot of them, yeah, they really are, but kids are lazy. They, they don't know how, there's, there's kids that have drive, either instilled or innate, but there's a lot of kids that are like, I don't want to do anything right now. They're exhausted. They got a lot going on in their lives. It's understandable. But it's our job to keep them motivated. Like, we need to get this done. And so talking about these things, the methods we use to promote student education, like, is rubbing a kid's back to support them or make them feel better or to show concern a bad thing and like if it's if it's for those purposes I don't think so but if it's any uh, ulterior motive uh, wicked thoughts that accompany it then it's not for that reason and I get why people are concerned like interactions between teachers and students. Now, ideally, in an ideal world, the teacher is focused on nothing but the good for the child with um, no ulterior motives, no wicked thoughts, not getting their own agenda in the way. Like, making them ask questions and giving them supporting knowledge to help guide them to this understanding. It's really what education is. This is what I've learned from this, this is how I do it and why I do it. So you're translating your experiences to children so that when they get to these situations where they come across like things, they can handle it. So there's a lot of kids going through a lot of things and they, they're working on a lot of snap decisions 
based off of what they have learned in mass media or on the internet, you know? And it's, it's a very filtered view. So if you, if a kid comes to you with this filtered view and it's to their detriment, ultimately, uh, a good teacher will give them pause for thought. Pause for thought. And again, going back to the, the purpose of this, is it's scary to teach because you don't know if what you're saying to a kid is okay with their parents or with society or whatever, or these hard truths are going to upset these students to the point of vindiction. Like, oh, my, my teacher, you know, they really pissed me off because they told me two hard truths there that like, I didn't want to hear what they had to say and it hurt me. I'm hurt. Uh, so I'm gonna make them hurt. And I'm gonna say things that may or may not be true or blow things way out of proportion. Because that's what kids do, you know? Adults, in my opinion, tell it like it is. Like, this is the good and the bad, but I'm sorry, you gotta get the bad and the good. It can just be roses and happy days every time. I'm gonna tell you, hey, you did it, you didn't do this uh, to your best ability, or you didn't think about this, and therefore I had to dock you. You didn't follow the directions. You were lazy and you didn't do it. Sorry. Like, I teach art. Essentially, all the kids have to do is work on something. Like, work towards something. This idea, this draw something, paint something. Just, I'm giving you these broad things. Like, good constraints just filters out little bits at a time. But, if you don't do it, if you're lazy, or you just give me, like, insincere work, that's going to affect you. But if you're doing a good job, you're always doing more and you're doing better. So, this is the conundrum being a teacher, is giving kids hard truths, being supportive the way that they need to be supported without um, malice or ill thought or wicked thoughts. Like, if I'm doing something, I'm doing it for your benefit. But that means that it's got to deal with the bad. And all a kid has to do is say, my teacher did something inappropriate or didn't, uh, was, was doing something bad or blah, blah, blah. And the teacher is crucified, you know? Could they become the martyr for trying to do what is right? And that's scary, because it's life ending. Also, like, that's a lot of kids to keep track of, you know? They're flying around and everything, if you run your classroom right, they should, should be safe. But you get kids doing things and weird things can happen. So when does trying to be a good teacher and all the wicked ways of the world separated? need better teachers for people that know how to talk to children are essentially pure of heart not trying to harm or hurt or do anything unhonorable dishonorable uh, for the education and in their position it's scary all I have to say about that. Do more, do better.